Here we start it now. Okay, Mr. Terence Wilson again. Yes, my brother. Thank you. Continuation of the Malcolm X, your cousin Malcolm X uh, uh, story, true. your family story. That's right. All right. Well, people watched the last one we did on YouTube. Yeah. So this time, and you had a couple of comments on um, Grenada genealogy and so, and other people. And Oh, where is he? He disappeared. Yeah. What happened? Let me see. Can you back there? Yeah, you're right. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I want you to to give more more um details on the family because try to explain to the people that they cannot argue argue with you. Because yeah. your family. That's right. right. So um you give some details the last time. I want you to, if you could go back into your family tree again and so on. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And detail, you know. Yeah, it's not a Especially problem. Malcolm X mother's name. And explain yeah. to them. Yes, yes, yes. The name and all these things. And then we go. We could continue to talk about you do a lot of talking about the family. Yeah. And you know, I could ask you a question. It's your show. All right. yeah. So you, you you go on your regular. Yeah, well, thank you for as the host for hosting me. Thank God for the opportunity yeah. to be able to do such a thing on the behalf of the nation and the people and on the history. Because there are lots of historical misinformation. Yeah, watch the camera. Watch in the camera. I was looking at that. Put all the paper in front of you, but watch in the camera. Yeah. yeah. There is a lot of historical misinformation circulating. And a lot of people don't know that because the family never had the opportunity to tell the story. So it was more like a hear say something. Somebody hear this and somebody hear that and they're only what they hear. And that's about it. So now I am going to start with this part here. The family tree. Now Jupiter and Mary Jane London. Yeah. They came from Africa. They were Africans. Yeah. They came to Grenada sometime in the 60s and some slave ship they say that was interdicted by the British and came to Grenada. But they were free servants, free, free, free people. They were not enslaved people. So therefore they came after slavery was, a, a, just before slavery was about to abolish? Yeah. In the 1860s. Oh, after the slavery was abolished, because that ships the British intercept was Portuguese ship mostly going to Brazil. Yeah. yeah. It could be. So they came to Grenada and they were forced, I believe, at Pity Esperance. That's what I mean, St. David there. And from Pity Esperance, they could have moved to Apertut. That's where the police station, you know, Apertut, that place going up in the hill. Eh? Yeah. Apertut. They lived there for some time. Then they came to Granville. I believe there was Mr. Jupiter was a sort of an overseer. He was someone in that kind of position. But um, one guy said he have document that They came from Peggy Swim over Hermitage. And they moved to Granbra. Well, I would not dispute any historical yeah. information. We say that they came from Peggy Swim over Hermitage and moved to Granbra from Granbra to Ladik. So I don't know, you know. Well, and that well, guy does do a lot of research. I saw he put it on um, on Facebook the last time. He said part of the your family came from Peggy Swim. 
Yeah, I would not dispute anything. And he gave me a name, but I'll tell you the name of, offline so you could yeah. search that name. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. All right. they, they lived in Grand Bass for some time. Because yeah, he said it from Peggy Swim to they Grand, right Grand Bass. That's close to Archibald Falls Farm. And he gave me a name of the family before. In that what area. London or, 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 or um, not. Yeah, the, the family name was Langdon. Yeah, but he, he named a name too. On, and then come to London. But go ahead. It's your yeah. show. Go ahead. Yeah. So now, they lived at Grand Bars for quite some time. Mm -hmm. By Archibald for Fall Farm around the area there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then they moved to La Digue. Yeah. They lived at Richmond. They lived at Richmond before. Then they lived at La Digue. That's the area yeah. where they purchased the land. Yeah which I am in charge of for the past 10, 12 years or more, after the death of my grandmother and my father. Yeah. So I'm the person who is in charge of the property. Yeah. The property was purchased in 1882. All right. 12 pounds sterling. At that time, one acre, 20 pool. That was the amount of property there. Yeah. They lived on the property there. There was a, a colonial style plantation house there, which was a large house. And the family was housed there. And afterwards, when the family started to go separate ways, who went to Trinidad, who went to St. James, and different areas in the country and the splitting take up start taking place there. So the family started to spread. Who went to England? Who went to America? Who went to maybe Venezuela? And this sort of a thing took place there. But my grandmother and Malcolm's mother, they grew up in the same house, along with Edgit and Langdon the one who brought her into the Marcus Garvey movement. Mm -hmm. yeah, so make in it Canada. clear for them. To... He brought her into the Marcus Garvey movement in Canada. Mm -hmm. And he was a traveler. He was traveling back and through towards from Montreal, Albert Street in Montreal, to Philadelphia, back and forth. And when he became part of that organization, which they call the Back to Africa movement. You know, they call it by all kind of funny names. Yeah, yeah. MPLA, MPLA. Yeah, to discredit, to discredit the, the organization. Right. So, to the back and forth travel, Malcolm's mother met Mr. Little. Mm -hmm. They got hooked up, they married. They had they, they start having children. But before, before that part here, I must say, Louis' mother's mother, that's her grandmother, mm -hmm. that's, that's Jupiter Langdon's wife, uh, Jupiter and Mary Jane Langdon, they were both born in Africa. Yeah. So we don't have no documents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I slave ship, yeah. To certify that. Yeah. Human cargo. But we have death certificate to show. Mm -hmm of the deaths. Like Mary Jane Langdon, the mother of Malcolm X's grandmother. Mm. She died on the sixth the eighth of September nineteen sixteen. She died in nineteen sixteen. Yeah. I at, like that. Yeah. You're showing your stuff. At right. eight, at age of sixty four years. Sixty four years. Let me see, 64, let me see, 68, I think. Let me make sure. Sixty-eight. She died at the age of sixty-eight, yeah. Yes, so she was sixty-eight years old when she died. Yeah. Make sure you photocopy of them things. Huh? Yeah, I have them there. Yeah. Her I... husband, Jupiter, he died on the 29th of December. 1901, mm -hmm. at the age of 70, 
six years. So he lived for 76 years? Yeah. He outlived her? Yeah, he outlived his wife by eight years. Yeah. She ate, um, eight, 76 years. Yeah, eight years difference. Sir. And both of these, all the family members, they were both buried on the family property. Yeah. Jupiter Langdon was buried on the bottom piece of the property. And his wife, Mary Jane Langdon, was buried on the top piece of the property, close to the mango tree and the hill. Okay, so they argue, one guy was saying, the son of Norton and London. So explain that for them again. Well, what I know that, I mean, was Jupiter and Mary Jane Langdon. London. Not Norton. Norton only came to the connection when Mr. Norton had the child had the child with Malcolm X's grandmother, who was mm. not yet 12 years old when she had a child for him. Okay, so explain that again, man. It's good, man. To explain yeah, it for the, for the viewers yeah. again. Yeah, Malcolm X's grandmother. Yeah. She was born on the 30th of April, mm. 1882. Right. If you do the maths, you will see she will be 12 years in 1894. Yeah. So, 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 Mr. Norton make a child with a with a very young girl. Yes, and she was not yet 12 years old when she had that child. That is what the readers does not understand. Now you clear that for them. So, Norton and London, how it comes there. Yeah, that's how we come about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to justify that now, saying that Mr. Norton had a child with her. They had a relationship and that was consensual. But in is rape. That is rape. Or pedophilas to some extent. Yeah, that is rape. That is according to their law books, their own law books, statutory rape because she rape. was not and dead. also pedophilia too. Yeah, she yeah, that's true. You said she was all old at that time. She was 11 years, 8 months old when she had the child. Ooh. And Norton was white or almost white? Was white. But it's, it is always said so on, they say that Norton later married to a mass woman. Well, I don't have information on that well, one. No, no, we don't go into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just telling you, yeah. Norton later married to a mass woman later well anyway okay. let's okay. we don't go in there. we stay on the malcolm x woman so he had this child with this i mean 11 year eight year old child he was a big man far advanced than her than her and he was on horseback yeah most of us who are aware historically we know that during the times of slavery when the plantation owners the workers on the plantation bring their little girl children there. Yeah. Most of them were abused by the plantation owners. In, in, in Grenadian Creole, we say they were Papa Asher's ne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see, you had to burn in rural Grenada to know that word. Oh, Men yeah. who interfered young yeah. girls. Yeah, young chicken. Age. Young chicken. We <laughs> used to call them. Perfila, they call him Papa Asher's name. Yeah. 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 So go ahead. So yeah, so he had this child with this young woman. Yeah. And then this sparked a sort of a vexation in the family too. Eh? Yeah. The family was very angry. Mr. Norton disappeared after that happened because he also had child with another woman. That one was one they call him, um, let me tell you, her name, Cecilia Roger. But this Roger. other one. So that yes. Roger is around the Munich paradise area, you have some, a lot of Rogers. Yeah, but they could be related. But that one stayed just below the Catholic Church today. Well, yes, the same area, Munich, Ladigal, about his, you know? Yeah. yeah. So this one, this young girl, she was 13 years old. So he, 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 he raped oh, he, but he had sex with her. Yeah, and, and they can, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that was a normal thing that was going on because he had money 
and position. So you could have done anything you want to. Maybe put them in the pocket. Put the police in the pocket. Well, those days, the police role was to protect the the um the the big landlord. Yeah. Because the landlord at that time used to finance the big churches too in harvest and so yeah. they used to give money to the to the to the colonial churches. Yeah. Police, even though what was on the law book was not put into effect. Yeah. Yeah, it was not effect. Yeah, so go ahead. Continue with the names of the or the family. Yes. So then so nobody the, would want to. Uh... Yeah. So that's 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 Mary Jane Langdon. So she died in September, the eighth of September, nineteen sixteen. Yeah. yeah. It's a document as as you see. Yeah. 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 Okay. And now the, the family members know the first one we had was Edgerton Langdon. He was born in 1880. 1880? 1880. 80? Yeah. Okay. And he is the one that went to Montreal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what's the camera? You could keep the paper in front of you. Yeah, looking for, uh, looking for the for the document there. Yeah. Let me see this one. Yeah, this one is you're right. So this one here, that's um, Solomon Edgerton Langdon. Yeah. That's his birth, birth document. All right. And he was born in 1880, October. Let me see. January 30th, mm -hmm. 1880. Yeah, 1880. Yeah, 1880. Mm -hmm. And then the next one we had was Edith Langdon. Which is Malcolm X's mother? Which is Malcolm X's grandmother. Grandmother, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this one here. This one here is Edith Langdon. Yeah. Malcolm X's grandmother. Grandmother, yeah. Seen it clearly? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I right. see it. So she was born on the 30th of April. You see? You see the 30th of April? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Big it, answer. 1882. It, so if she had Louise in 1894, yeah. it shows clearly she was 12 years old. She was supposed to be 12 years oh, old. See, this is the one that was raped by the Norton man. That's right. Right. So now those people are going to get the story. Yeah. Right. So was... more, yeah. Stay more in the camera. Don't move around too much. You're good. Yeah, you're good right there. Stay there. Yeah, so that was clearly an act of rape. Right, yeah. like they, they slide it and they try to push it aside like if nothing really happened. Happened. Because, you know, slaves and had no rights. And the lower class of people... Yeah. They could be trampled and nothing can come out of that. All so, right. then, so, so fast forward for the other to the names of the other children now. Yeah. So now we, we're going on this one is Gertrude Magdalene Langdon. Yeah. What do you have bought? 1884. All right. So she she born after Malcolm X's yeah. mother. Yeah, Malcolm X's grandmother. Yeah, grandmother, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she was my grandmother's mother. Okay. So, okay. So she, right, right, right. So that's where I come in here. I come in through yeah. Gotchu. Got got right. Right. Then we have Florence Langdon. Right. Florence Langdon. All right. What year bought? She was born in 1886. All right. Oh, so children were most likely was born in kind of two years, two years, two apart. years apart, two years apart. Yeah. 
As the as the lady stop no the baby, Mr. London make a next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You're just packing them one after the other. One after the other. This one here was Reginald Victor London. And that's 1889. So, so a couple girls born early. Yeah. All right. You see? Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. I see it. If you bring up your hand a little higher, I seen it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have the last one here now. We have. Oh, this one here is Solomon Edgit and Langdon. Yeah, that, that was the first one. Right, the first one. That the one you say what travel a lot. Yeah. Right, so he Back was the first. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah. And then we have this one here. This is Malcolm X's mother. That's her first legal birth document. Yeah. You see it clearly? Yeah. Bring up your hand. All right. You see Clay? 38th of what? Let me see. She born in 18... 1894. What does she say? 1894. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. That's when Malcolm X mother born. Okay. Second of January, 1894. Okay. All right. So, so now nobody can argue again. See? You see? Look yeah, at yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, tenth January eighteen ninety four. That's right. when she was baptized. Yeah, yeah. When she was now born, baptized. baptized. Yeah. And this was the first legal document. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Legal book document. So what, what, what really? What religion? Were they Anglican or Catholic? Anglicans. Anglican. Right. So mostly, a lot of information that have been passed. Stating that she was born in 1897. It is it's, it's false. Yeah. yeah, it's false. It's not correct. Yeah. She was not born in 1897. Right. Because when her when her son, Wilfred Little, came to Grenada, he told me in conversation wow. that his mother died, he came in 1991. Yeah. And he said his mother died. He came in 1993, sorry. Yeah. That was at the invitation of the Morris MBPM, the Morris yeah. Patriotic, Patriotic Front Movement. For October 19th anniversary celebration for slain revolutionary yeah. leader Mal, Morris Bishop. And yeah. that. So he said, sadly, his mother died two years ago. So she almost lived for 100 years. Yes, yeah, so she was 97 years old when she died. When she died, yeah. So they having this information that her name was Louise, what nothing? Helly nothing. That's a name. That's false information. That's false information. That's not correct. Her name was Louise. Emily Langda. All right. Okay. That was her correct name. Name. Louise Emily M Langda. Shout it again. <laughs> Louise Emily Langda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good information, sir. Not no Louis Helen Norton. Yeah. And Mr. Norton was a rapist. We had to see that yeah. what he was. He committed rape. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if rape is rape, we don't have to hide and pretend that rape is not rape and that's okay and all this kind of nonsense. Yeah. Call it what it is. Rape is rape. She was raped. Okay. So, all right. Let's go now and you could talk about where the, the Malcolm X family all over Grenada uh, and where they travel to and so. Yes. But that's a that's indeed an honor and a privilege to see that presently I have my brother who is a third cousin. Yeah. Well, and today you go you go talk about your sister from England. <laughs> Not the, the one in Grenada. <laughs> and then my sister Judy Baker. Tell them Judy Baker is your sister. Who is another, another cousin? So this is Judy, Judy Baker on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, Judy Baker. What, what are the things? Judy tour operator or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> she's a Malcolm X. She's Malcolm X bloodline. 
bloodline. That's your sister. That's my sister, Judy All Barker. Right. Right. So she's Barrett. a cousin of Malcolm X. That's right. right. And then we have Todd Barrett. Let me call him here. Todd. Todd. Come on a minute. Perth. Yeah, Todd Barrett. You got my father, mother. That's my grandmother. She had this child for Mr. Todd Barrett of Mount Airy. Your grandmother? My grandmother had a child for Todd Parrot of Mount Erie. I know there is a Parrot guy I see in Toronto. And I think he tell me from Ladi Ital. Well, my, my brother is, well, he, he has some Parrot from Ladi, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but uh, you're just talking about, okay, I understand what yeah, I mean. Talking about the, the family, me, me, grandmother. Had a child for one oh, of the parents. Yeah. But more, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. of the parents come by Victoria. Yeah. So there's St. Patrick's. Yeah. yeah. And, and the parents are in really St. Mark. Yeah. To my father. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But to my grandmother, whose name was Olive Hilda Langdon. Langdon. Have a child for parents. Yeah. And then she became Ojas when her father. Yeah, married her mother, Gertrude Langdon. Peter became Gertrude Ojas. Ojas. Yeah. And her father, Joseph Ojas, was the fund fundraiser for the Marcus Garvey movement in Grenada. Oh, so Joseph Ojas was also a, a Pan Africanist. That's right. No. And he was a fundraiser for the Marcus Gavi movement in Grenada. Yeah. So the family was pan Africanist. Right. right so putting right. the struggle early. Yeah. When I showed Wilfred Little some information about who just supporting the pan African movement, Wilfred Little said, Grenada paid. One of the most vital rules in Pan Africanism. Yeah, and for the Marcus Gavin movement. Because Louise Langdon later, at some point in time, she became, uh, she was the secretary for the Marcus Gavin movement. She's doing newsletter mm -hmm. for the movement and all the secretarial work and so on. So this is my brother. I was the same. That is a, that, oh, that is the same young boy. Yeah, from England. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, um, everything good, man. Everything good. And teach family the history and showing them. Yeah. So when my eyes close, they should have everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You keep it like I, a legacy. I, yeah, they should have it. So why is it? Why is it in Guinea? The intellectuals are hiding from you guys. Well, a bit. I believe some of the people, you know, they have their social kind of prejudice, you know, based on their educational baggage of achievement that they have compared to a man who... When I look at the Caribbean islands and the way people go about and look for information and you want to document people. Mm-hmm. In other Caribbean islands, they don't do that. Only in Grenada, I notice this. Yeah, nonsense. This kind of attitude uh, of uh, people want to do. They want to do stuff, but they don't. They don't want to um, go into the the roots of it, and they don't want to highlight where they get it from. That's Information true. don't come from a tree and fall. At all. Well, my father, he, I could endorse what you're saying there. He told me at one point in time, he said, Terence, nearly every book that was written, all the information from the books written, most of them, they come from Grenada. And the people never showed any kind of interest in the family to see where they make a contribution to try to help or anything like that. 
they just come, they get information and they go with information and they make the money. Well, why don't you use the program to tell them next time when they want to come? Because Malcolm X is a global name in the struggle. Yeah. We see what's going on in, uh, in Niger. In, not only in Niger, the whole uh, the region African. from West Africa will go right back to Chad. That's you right. Guinea. Mm -hmm. You had Mali, you have Burkina Faso, you have Niger, and also in Chad. Yeah. You have a movement of change in yes, that region. Yes. But that is, I, I endorse the changes there 100%. And I think what the African nations should do, get rid of all foreign military presence on the continent. Set Africa free. And with all these get rid activists of taking Pan-Africanism coming to it, and next thing again, I observe they do too. They talk about the um, Pan-African Pan movement. They talk about Marcos Gavi, yes, but they never talk about the founder of Pan Africanism was a Trinidadian guy. Yeah. I think his name was Silv something Sylvester. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was before before um before Marcos Gavi. Okay, right, right, right. I'm gonna look for his name and I'm gonna tell you. So go ahead and keep yes. the story and Keep on going. I will, I yeah. just pull up so they don't want the average person, the ordinary person, to tell the story. This is why I said to some of them when they come and they try to, it's like they try to bully me into submitting the information that I have for that they can get it to utilize for the display. For the, having for the personal benefit. Yeah, I said personal. I said, let me tell you guys something. This high house of some of the writing, writing there. Get your asses down on the ground and be real. Eh? You hear that? Yeah. That information here and that story should be told by family. So since then, by telling telling them that one or two of them that is like they back off and they have no interest in that anymore. Because they cannot see that something they could promote with a man like me. But Thank if they can get the proper information, the man name was Henry Sylvester Williams. Okay. The original founder of Pan Africanism was a Trinidadian. That's right. Yeah. Let me say that. Henry Sylvester Williams. Henry Sylvester Williams. A Trinidadian. Trinidadian. Yeah, so yeah. um, yeah, so um this is is the problem in Grenada because even me when I start doing my little thing, a lot of a lot of them attack me too because perhaps they feel who the hell is me to be. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nobody don't nobody don't bother me again. Because they don't know bother you. me no more. But you stand strong since I know you. You yeah, so uh, <laughs> so this is why I always <laughs> say if you could find more Grenadians. If somebody could close that door in that background, that door yeah. behind you. Yeah. Tell your brother to close that door in the background. That yeah. Door behind, behind you. The closet oh. behind you. Yeah. Mm. Not the white one. The white one. Oh, the white one. Yeah. You close it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um yeah. If you could if you could mobilize more some more people who kind of don't do it like you, and we could do I could even add one more person on the show. I could, yeah, put, yeah. I, could I could add a third person. Yeah, we could do and, that. And with the build up of uh of uh of of um yeah. Independence if we could do some something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, we... uh, so so <laughs> so you could go ahead giving a story, you know what I mean? Yeah, so uh, I want to say less today. Yeah. Until we come in again. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we get in, we're getting so saucy and nice now. Yeah. Brother, my brother. 
and his wife, they want to take me to the country. Yeah. Take me up now, bring me home now. So we'll, we'll have another life again. Not continue shot, a boy continue. No, but I mean, yeah. your information you give is to clarify. Yeah. And then maybe one of those days when we're doing some more clearing up, there are several books that we'll have to get some corrections. Yeah. I have all the information. I'll, I'll be having the book sent into display to show the public. The so, mission. Um, so, what is your plan for the 50th anniversary of Grenada Independence? What's over the, the writers in Grenville and St. Andrews and Patrick? And what is no, going we, on? We don't have that in we don't have writers in St. Andrews and St. Patrick. We don't have that. Everything is in St. George's. <laughs> so you know okay so 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 the writers in the in the rural they don't have a voice no nah, they don't have a voice okay well independence is coming what's about what about parish parish involvement yeah but so let's, they, let's hope they don't politicize it but as usual they always do that yeah and and you have it's along party lines. You, if you are an NMP or you, you are an NDC and this kind of nonsense. But, I, but, but you don't think you don't think it's both party fault because some people they only active in community when the political party is in power. Which that's true. Yeah. That is true. Some of, some of them maybe might might be sidelined, and some of them just once the party not in power, they don't take part again. Yeah. And they have this kind of resentment towards those who are in poor. Yeah. Because well, both group both 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 group of people tend to resent each other. Yeah. So that's a, that become a, a Grenadian norm. Like they have this kind of a attitude, they would change that at all. Which is very bad. Yeah. And so uh, well, in closing up now, you could um do a little summarize and tell people. Well, what yes. Think and why they should come to the source? Yeah. For information and listening to That's scholars on the side who write and say things, and perhaps. And I, and I am prepared to stand behind all what I see and yeah, You don't have to look for nothing again. Just speak in the camera. Speak yeah, on your right. screen. That's yeah. Why. I don't. I don't have to look for anything and hide and be afraid. I can stand there and all of us and defend what I see with the information that I have, which is the most accurate information. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, talk in. Say what you want to say. So I would like for those who, those doubters and those scoffers and scorners who are looking to hear it from a big time scholar, getting it from a grassroots man who is voicing his ABC. So they have to understand that they Tell must come. In Tell them grass, grass grow in the earth, make yeah. roots in the earth. Yeah. Don't grow in the air. At all. Do you hear my brother Hudson? Anyway. One thing. Thank you. All right. Hudson. So uh, it's nice for having you again this evening. And we will and do some poetry because you are a poet also. Yeah. And it was you that brought me into the poor poet of Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The poor poet, yeah, when you were in Toronto. Okay. So we have to do some poetry. If they think we are just so, they will get to understand. So, so anyway, just stay, stay in the camera, in the thing as we closing up now. We yeah. will close and, uh, well, Malcolm X's cousin, Mr. Terrence Wilson, telling it as it is. And most of the researchers and scholars who tend to to argue on on dates and information well today mr terence wilson is giving it from the horse's mouth he is the most active member of the family in in grenada he got the documentation in documentations in his hands so any body watching people, persons or people or with the same Grenada, this is going to be 
on Facebook and we right. also going to put it on YouTube too. When they want information about Grenada and Malcolm X, contact Mr. Terrence Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, have a good night. And yeah, till well, you when you're ready night. to do something again, yeah, you come again. All yeah. right. We'll keep in constant contact. So yeah, you know man. To... Yeah, all right. It's a lot we have to educate them on. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm we cutting not... off now. We, yeah, yeah, we are. Not... Raise what you have. Raise what you have. Show them what you have. Show, show, yeah, tell them this is the archive. This is the archive. Archive. All right. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. All right. Listen. Yeah, good evening. Keep up, your, keep up your good works and stay healthy. You and too. Tell, tell Miss Judy Becker, your sister, yeah. how to yeah. say hello. I will. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay, man. Yeah, later. Bye-bye. Yeah.